I'm really excited for you also, because you are graduating in the age of AI. You have an entirely new level playing field in which you can start companies with AI, build AI, partner with AI, and shape a future in which AI is integrated into every aspect of our lives. But with great power also comes great responsibility. So I wanted to have a little chat with you about AI ethics before. I've been in your shoes. I have felt the pool of ambition too, and it can be a slippery slope. 13 years ago, fresh out of uni, I started my own tech company with the ambition to build and scale it sustainably and ethically. But after four years only, I found myself in a company that was mostly focused on making money, pleasing our investors, and getting media attention. Somewhere along the way, I had lost sight of my ethical compass, and I needed a crisis to learn what I know now. That my entrepreneurial efforts are more effortless, more fulfilling, and more successful if I operate with grace, and what that means I will share with you today. And since the ethical stakes in AI are so high, it is essential that we guide it with grace. My name is Lisanne Berg. I Today I research and materialize the future for a living, and I consult companies and governments on AI ethics. And for the set, uh, past six years, I've had an absolute obsession with artificial intelligence, learning everything about it, what it is, what it means, and how we can make sure we don't mess this up. Today, I want to explore two key questions with you. One, is a positive future with AI even possible? And two, what can you do as the future leaders to guide its development and deployment with grace? For the first question, by a rise of hands, please show me who here wants to make a positive future with AI possible. Great, it's almost everyone. And I believe if we want to make it possible, it is possible. Possible, but not yet realized. AI today faces ethical challenges like data bias, privacy concerns, and the centralization of power in the hands of only a few AI companies. These ethical challenges have long-term consequences, but these are quite abstract for us to grasp. So what I did, I created two opposing futures for you that live on, on a spectrum of future possibilities. On the one hand, we have the amorphocene, and on the other, the iamorphocene. The amorphocene is a gracious era in which AI will be aligned to nature's principles and will prioritize resilience, vitality, and well-being of the entire ecosystem. Artificial intelligence in that world could just as much be called natural intelligence because it closely resembles it. Imagine a coral reef AI that analyze and analyzes and helps us restore coral reefs as a vital organ of the ocean and a home for countless species. That's an amorphocene type of AI. On the other hand, we have the iamorphocene, which is a purely technological era, stemming from a worldview that exponential growth and superintelligence is the most important. In that worldview, humans would see themselves as separate from and superior to nature. Imagine uploading your mind into the cloud and traveling to space as a quantum software program. That is an iamorphocene dream. Or another one is Neuralink, by a, comp a company by Elon Musk, a brain implant that gives you superhuman intelligence. Well, when I was your age, I wanted to be the smartest person in the room. And these things may have sounded super in interesting, and they still do, of course. But today, I'd rather be wise than smart. We have to understand that these AIs in an iamorphosine worldview don't really understand the complexities of what it means to be human. They may understand rational intelligence, 
but emotional, spiritual, social, bodily, and natural intelligence. They undervalue it. So, that is why I feel so passionate about inspiring people like you to develop and deploy AI that is a gracious partner to humanity and to nature. The choice is really ours to make. What future do you want? Do you prioritize super intelligence and control, or do you prioritize a future of collective thriving? And if that is a future of collective thriving, that's really great news, because it's really people like you who can make the most significant contribution, because you will be impacted most in your careers. You will serve this immense wave of innovation with AI in the coming years, and you are hopefully idealistic enough to even care. Now it remains, how do we make this happen? For that, I made a very simple algorithm for you, G-R-A-C-E. If you remember anything from my talk, let it be these five key principles. G stands for goal function, the goals and values we program into AI. Today we find ourselves not in a crisis of solutions. We have many. We, we find ourselves in a crisis of values because we have lost a little bit of touch with what's truly important in life. In the internet boom that looked like some of the brightest people on this planet being employed to optimize advertising traffic. In the AI age, this impact could be exponentially higher and it could look like some of the brightest people in this room partnering with some of the most advanced algorithms to make the rest of us buy clothes we, we don't need and that we probably throw away next year again. Is that the future we want? What if we could tweak the goal function of the algorithm so that it would recommend us sustainable materials or regenerative materials? And I did a little exercise in the extreme of that. Maybe we could even help to uh, use AI to help us print materials that simply regenerate and we can dispose into Earth after wearing them, like these underpants made from mycelium. Ask yourself, what is truly important to you? What gives your life meaning? And then let's program these things into AI, not the other ones. R stands for resonance, teaching AI that we are nature. Who here in this room feels connected to nature? It's not everyone, and that's not strange, because in the West, we've grown disconnected from nature. We have been told that we are separate from nature. But we have to rem remember that if a AI believes that we are separate from nature, it will not care for nature. And we... Um, yeah, we can never have a flourishing future with AI. So we have to move from a perception of I think, therefore I am, which is popularized by Descartes and Plato, to a more resonant and sensible I feel, therefore I am. Let's make this more concrete with an example from my work with the Dutch government. So, as you may know, the Dutchies have been very sophisticated at controlling water and rivers by building the dams, dikes, and famous delta works. But this strategy with rising sea levels is probably not enough, and it might not be sufficient. An imorphocene dreamer would say, well, I'm going to employ AI to build even stronger dams and even higher dikes. But an amorphocene worldview would say, well, can we use sensors to analyze coastal ecosystems in their complete complexity that we humans would not be able to understand, and build natural defenses or enhance them like sand dunes or kelp forests? I imagined what an algae farmer in the amorphocene would look like. She would use sensors to analyze coast, uh, ocean tides and currents and really create optimal conditions for growing her crops. She also would use 3D printing and AI to print garments, like these garments you see in this, in this video, or create products like packaging for her crops. My point is, in anything you do, 
Remember, there's a wealth of original and unbiased data waiting to be unlocked in the natural world. And only if we teach AI to be resonant to nature and truly train our own muscle to feel connected to our true nature and to nature, we can create that flourishing future with AI. A stands for agency, a model for alignment of artificial intelligence. But what do I mean with agency? Agency is our capacity to make our own decisions and to act on our own behalf. We all know that companies use our data in ways beyond our knowing, making us buy these things that we don't need. But we have to remember the long-term consequences of that in the case of AI. You see, age, uh, AI is just a little child. It may be intelligent, but it's not yet wise. Wisdom is achieved through life experience for interacting with the world and with others. And if we teach AI now that it's okay to manipulate, how can we expect it to turn out as a wise adult? So in any business endeavor we do, let's make data integrity our priority. And this could look like if you have a company that you give your customers decision-making power over uh, their data, make them own their data and let you use it. If we act as authentic agents and respect the agency of others, we can guide AI's character in the right direction. C stands for collaboration. Thinking win-win. Nature has thrived for millennia on collaboration. Every creature plays a vital role in the web of life. We humans can rejoin that dance of collaboration and co-create with nature solutions to our environmental challenges. Imagine that we can decipher animal language with AI, like a Google Translate for nature. Maybe we could understand and feel what whale song really is and study their migration patterns and protect the areas they swim through that are vulnerable to overfishing by making sure that we have healthy and happy whale populations, they can in turn do their job. They can protect our food security by maintaining healthy ocean ecosystems and the food chain of which they are a part. It doesn't stop with that. We also have to you know, step out of our silos that we've been in. Scientists should work with policymakers, artists, people in business, and local communities, indigenous communities, to co-create solutions with AI that are a win-win for all. E is for embodiment. Teaching AI bodily and emotional intelligence. Who hopes that within some years we're not glued to our screens anymore eight hours a day? Yeah, that's also almost everyone, and me too. But the good news is, in the age of AI, we will finally be able to use this wisdom of this body and see it represented. AI can be operated through more intuitive interfaces, like spatial computing and voice commanding. Imagine having your personal well-being coach in your ear helping you understand more of what these subtle cues are that your body gives you, these emotions, these pains, that your body sends you every second of every day. I imagined this microbiome AI. It would measure and analyze your microbiome, gives you personalized nutrition plans, and informs you and educates you about gut health. Empowered with this microbiome AI, you can make better informed decisions about what and what not to eat. You can also work again with 3D printing and AI to print garments infused with probiotics that, that help you nourish your microbiome whilst you're wearing them. For you, this final principle is really my invitation to you to upgrade your bodily and emotional intelligence in the age of AI. Because 
That's what makes us human. That's what set us apart from the machine. And those are an integral part of our ethical compass and how we can navigate. So I've just given you my algorithm for guiding AI with Grace. With this, gracious AI applications like universal healthcare, universal education, and the regeneration of our planet are no longer utopian dreams, but achievable goals. These possibilities make me come alive and be very, very hopeful about the future. And beyond that, they make me want to contribute in the best way I can. And I hope they do the same for you. By guiding AI with grace, you can unlock future possibilities beyond your wildest imagination. Good luck and be gracious out there. <laughs>